Welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast. I'm your host, Ludo Miller, and I'll be interviewing tutors and thought leaders from across the tutoring landscape to inspire, inform, and motivate you to become the best tutor you can be. The Qualified Tutor Community is a safe and supportive space for tutors who love to learn and grow. We offer training, resources, ideas, and a chance to connect with like-minded tutors. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes. Welcome to this week's episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Today we welcome our guest, John Nichols, president of the Tutors Association, and of course, our wonderful founder, Julia Silva. Welcome to all. How are we doing today? Brilliant. Very well, thank you. Wonderful, brilliant. For our listeners, John, we'd love to introduce John. John is, as I mentioned, president of the Tutors Association, has recently been moved into this position uh, and has been a director of the Tutors Association for just over a year now. Uh, John's background is in uh, classroom teaching, but has increasingly moved into working for education charities and then setting up uh, his own online learning company called Get My Grades as well as a small bit of tutoring on the side, which is, which is crucially important to this conversation, of course, John. We'll be tapping into your tutoring work as well. Um, but we'd love to start, really, with, with our first question, John. We, if you've, if you've a, a listener of the Qualified Tutor podcast, you'll know this is what we open up with. But really, John, what, what kind of a student were you? And, uh, and did you ever have a tutor? So um, I... <laughs> I was a really good student, I think, most of the time in terms of uh, I was probably that quiet child that, that sat in the class at the side and really didn't get in much trouble and and mostly did uh, pretty much what I was asked to do. Um, and yeah, so generally speaking, um, yeah, probably quite a good student. I wouldn't have minded teaching myself, I suppose. I wasn't throwing rubbers at anybody or anything like that. Um, uh, <laughs> I must admit there are times when I, I did try and uh, try and do the minimum amount of work possible and did m- almost all of my homework the, in in the morning at school after I'd arrived uh, between like arriving in morning registration um, to avoid having to do any homework at home for most of my school career. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, yeah, I think it, it obviously worked. I came out with a fairly good bunch of grades and A-levels and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, it didn't go badly wrong at all, I wouldn't yeah. say. So, so you you can sympathise perhaps with teachers and tutors then when their when their students are being disruptive because you found that that could have been you yourself at one point. <laughs> well, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I, I always sympathise with teachers and tutors that have uh, more difficult students, and I mean, I wasn't a difficult student at all, but and I, and I think that gives me a different experience, sort of, of the motivations for some students who do, do crave attention in the classroom and, and are willing to do necessarily whatever it takes to get that attention. But I mean, I've seen all sorts of uh, of different students as well. So I, I think whilst my own uh, school career, I was generally the quite quite a good one and sitting in the side and not really involved in any mishaps. Um, I obviously saw the students that were involved in mishaps uh, and uh, as anyone would have done, obviously. And uh, so I can always sympathise. But yeah, myself, I was uh, I was one of the students that I would like to teach and, and very fortunate in the, a lot of my tuition career. I've actually done quite a lot of tuition for a, a, for a period of time. I, I used to be a tutor for six and a half days a week. Um, so that was obviously not on the side then between <laughs> 2012 and uh, 2017. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and I've obviously taught a whole range of students, including some that were more like me and some that were a lot less like me. Um, uh, yeah, very interesting. We, we, we want to, to, to tap into, uh, John, what, the, the wider role of tutors. So, so you've there, you've mentioned that, that you yourself was a, were a tutor and that you had a kind of a wide range of ability amongst your, your students, and, and that's something that tutors have to contend with the, the whole time, is adapting their, their session structure and adapting their delivery for the student that they have. But uh, especially in the context of, of the, the recently announced National Tutoring Programme, John, we'd love to ask, what, what do you think is, what do you see as the wider role of, of, of tutors? So tu- tuition is extremely adaptable. And it's extremely flexible and responsive to, to students and learners. And therefore, it often becomes much more efficient. You don't ever 
in a good tuition environment, especially for one to one, but it also applies more in a small group setting than it than classroom teaching. Um, in a one to one tuition setting, you're always responding to the needs and the ability level and and the the level of knowledge of the student, right? So. In that sense, tuition is extremely efficient in terms of time because the student is always, and especially if the tutor is particularly good or experienced, the, tu the tutor is always adapting their tuition to what the, the student understands, um, asking questions, relevant questions, uh, adapting and pitching things. If the student maybe has got a misconception, they can nip it in the bud there and then. Um, if the student has perhaps given a very interesting answer, I've had students in the past uh, who, who give very intriguing answers, uh, can they explore that in more detail before bringing it back to the course. That level of flexibility is just not possible in a classroom environment. And I've been in both. And, um, and I can say that there's absolutely a significant element of flexibility there, which is just not possible um, in, a, in a classroom environment compared to a tuition environment. So I think the, the real value there is, is the flexibility. John, I think yeah. you nailed it with talking about flexibility and responsiveness. And oh, great. So just before we started recording, we, I mentioned to you, I mean, I started giving you a sense of what our course looks like. Um, mm. And workshop three in our qualification for tutors is the learning loop. And we talk about a loop because we want to teach tutors to be responsive. So the loop starts with assessments. And yeah, of course. Planning, teaching and reassessment. And of course, that process happens moment to moment in yeah. tutoring, doesn't it? Because, you know, when you just said, you know, you'll hear a funny answer. Well, you'll want to hear if that's a misconception or you'll want to hear if you just found out, you know, a whole wealth of knowledge that your student, you didn't realize a student had all sorts of things. Right. Mm. Um, and then you also mentioned about pitch. Um, and adjusting the pitch and adjusting the pace to your student. So that's something that we talk about very much when we talk about why tutoring is so effective. So those three things together, the responsiveness and using your assessment to adjust your pitch and pace moment to moment, that's why tutoring is so efficient, isn't it? Mm. And it's in very many ways why tutoring is so different to classroom teaching, because in classroom teaching, you're almost trained to have a plan and more or less stick to the plan and not to veer off it that's the worst possible thing to do as a tutor it scraps half of the advantage of being one-to-one -one, um, or even being in a small group where you can have very interesting contributions from a small number of students and then you you can uh, and address things that perhaps the the way the group's moving and and they've got where they've got similarities and what they understand and what they don't understand um, so yeah absolutely i'd say that the, the the that feedback loop making it rather than lesson to lesson where you're doing this sort of cycle, you're doing it minute to minute. Yes. And I think that's really important, which also introduces massive extra challenges for tutors in terms of subject knowledge, in terms of not being able to predict exactly where your lesson's going to go and being able to get it back on track. Mm -hmm. um, all of these things are very different. And I think being a tutor is a great training for anybody who's in education in any role, really. In fact, I'm actually quite wish that many teachers had been tutors at some point to try and uh, to get used to it. We, um, we had a fantastic insight that came from Victoria Gibbs, who's a community member who works with full-time tutors, residential tutors. And she said that one of the problems that they tend to have is that they cover the curriculum so quickly because tutoring is so efficient that actually their challenge is to find out what to teach next. <laughs> Oh, I never have that issue, I can promise you. I've never, but I, I have had the issue where you can cover the curriculum very, very fast. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just mean and I make them do stuff that's even harder. And I just keep them harder. <laughs> and suddenly challenging them. It's like a yeah. personal trainer, isn't it? You just keep pushing them. Yeah. yeah. And I almost just pretend that the exam is going to be as hard as what I'm giving them. And, uh, and then the advantage of that is they never get complacent because you always, you always sort of, they say, oh, is the exam really going to be this hard? And you just go, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. You can, you can, harder. You can, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it could be harder than this, exactly. So, uh, and so then you can, uh, you can really test their, their metal. And then they find out in the exam that actually they're being asked to charge for a proton rather than to explain string theory or quantum mechanics. Yeah, they're well, pleasantly surprised. They, did re they, they know what they're talking about and it really seems much easier for them. Mm. Well, you want you want to be constantly pushing them, don't you? And and that's what we are trying to instill in our tutors is that you know plateauing is never acceptable. If if, if they're finding it too easy, then don't remain on that. And that's part of the adaptability that you've just been discussing, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's that constant self-assessment that you have as a tutor 
means that you can constantly be adapting your, your delivery and ensuring that it's getting harder if that's what the student needs or that if they're finding it too tricky then you can then you can bring the kind of the level down um absolutely it, yeah and in the same sort of vein um john what, the, the tta supports tutors that that's abundantly clear what we'd like to know is is how do you what, what is it the kind of level of support that you bring to tutors in, in improving their their service their their their, their, their work is there what kind of as someone listening to this who is who is a tutor who is considering working with the tutors association what what support is is, is brought to them yeah absolutely so the tta is uh does a number of things for tutors which individual tutors or tuition providers wouldn't wouldn't ever be able to do themselves so one of the first things there is is advocacy for tutors in the tuition sector to government and to a range of other stakeholders um, which simply isn't possible for independent tutors or for individual tuition companies. Even the largest tuition companies are never going to get the ear of a minister really to to sort of listen to the the sector's needs as a whole. And that's something that we are we are actively doing uh, on a almost uh, weekly basis, basically engaging with various different stakeholders, um, whether it's in government, whether it's ministers, lords, MPs, whether it's uh, people in the EEF, having that uh, that representation for the sector at that level and being able to contribute uh, to the national discussion in a way that never existed before the TTA uh, came along um, is a really valuable uh, asset for tutors and if you think that means that we get to the situation where actually things like the national tutoring program get discussed and where the national tutoring program uh, by no means we by no means can decide to produce these things ourselves we need we need policy makers to 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 drive these things forward but we can be that that voice alongside them that's constantly pushing them in the direction of what's practical what's feasible or what's likely to work and and help them to avoid pitfalls and i've got to be honest we don't always get listened to but that's by the, if, if you've got, always got listened to then i know you're probably doing some mind tricks or something uh, and it just it's not the way of the world but we are we we're representing tutors and having a voice which they otherwise wouldn't have and which they previously didn't have. And that's really, really crucial. That's one, that's one really important element, being an advocate and a representative for the tuition sector in a non-commercial sense that mm -hmm. government and policymakers are willing to listen to and respond to. Obviously, then that goes the other way. We can take information from, from policymakers or from uh, the wider tuition sector, from journalists and the media. We can take information, we can convey that back down to members as well. So it's a two-way channel. Um, we're, we regularly provide updates to members um, in terms of what's going on in, in our best understanding of where policy is moving. Obviously, the, the National Tutoring Programme is currently in a position where it's not actually yet launched. It's just been sort of announced that it's going to happen it's not happening yet but we are in a great position to get that information to help shape not only shape what's going on but also then take that and convey it to members who who perhaps are sitting there saying well, okay great there's a national tutoring program what do i have to do what i mean how can i be involved and that's something where we can really provide that sort of insight to members uh, and it helps them to understand what is going on with a policy like this or even with similar policies Mm. Even in normal times when there's no national tutoring program, um, being able to explain to them, look, it, here's what's going on for policymakers and, uh, and, and be able to let them understand sort of this is what's going on uh, and what the thought process is going on behind that. So, so yeah, really the two-way channel between the, the policymakers and the tuition sector is really, really crucial. OK, um, something else that's really important, obviously, is the, the, the range of benefits we offer. So there's a whole range of benefits and discounts um, and advice that we offer for tutors uh, that can be for tutors that are starting up, for corporates, for any any of a range of tutors, really. Um, and it's really important that obviously tutors have access to a support channel, um, which they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, because tuition can be a fairly lonely profession um, and uh, and it's important for us to be able to, to sort of support tutors and for them to facilitate that support in addition to all the other sort of organisations which, which work to do that. And we don't see ourselves as replacing any organisations or trying to, to do everything because we clearly don't and we can't. Um, but it's helping to facilitate those connections between different organisations, different corporates, independent tutors, affiliate members, uh, and being able to help ensure that tutors can access the support they need. So that's really, really crucial. Yeah. Well, there's uh, 
it's 101 different uh, different things that you do there, isn't it? It's, it's brilliant Quite to see that, 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 that level of support. I think really we want to drill down a little bit more into, to, into to the NTP. We know that there isn't a whole uh, load of information and there's still a little bit of clarification that, that, that needs to be given about the, the exact details. But really, John, you seem to be kind of one of the best place people to talk about the National Tutoring Programme and obviously for listeners of ours who are interested in, in being involved in it, um, they, 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 it would be good to have, to have a little bit more uh, clarity on that. So really we, we want to ask, how can individual tutors be involved in the National Tutoring Programme? Whisper this, I'm also sort of interested myself as a tutor in how I can get involved. So I may take this, invi- this advice sort of right down now, but um, how can an individual tutor be, be involved? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really, really good question. And the important thing to say is that the National Tutoring Programme is still at a fairly early stage. But despite being announced a couple of weeks ago, uh, government doesn't really understand the tuition sector, hasn't done in the past. And they're really scrabbling around to try and put something together uh, that's, that's cohesive, is, cohesive and is going to work. We're very supportive of their efforts to do this. Um, we think it's going to be a great, a great idea. It's got a lot of potential to, to really deliver a big impact for a lot of students across the country. But it's still taking some um, hammering together. It's still in production, as it were. So there's a lot of things here, which uh, there's a lot of details which haven't been finalised. So I won't be able to tell you exactly how um, how tuition providers are going to get approved, exactly what the process is. That sort of stuff is still being put together. But certainly what we're pushing to ensure is that the process is um, is is fair, is objective, and ensures that the tutors and tuition providers that comply with the high quality standards that we, we maintain for all TTA members, and I'm sure that all reputable tutors want to follow anyway, that they are enforced uh, and that actually we can prevent... Um, Joe Bloggs Tutoring Co. set up tomorrow from actually just randomly then joining uh, a big government um, program like this. It should be for professional tuition providers that can demonstrate they can have an impact and that have got the, the, the infrastructure in place, whether it's from an individual tutor level, that they, they simply have resources, they know what they're doing, they've been appropriately trained, they've, they get appropriate updates in terms of uh, in, in their practice all the way up to the corporates and the infrastructure they put in place to support this as well. One thing that's really important to bear in mind is that with something like the National Tutoring Programme, government never, ever likes dealing with huge, huge numbers of commercially minded people. Um, So it's really important to bear in mind that individual tutors may be required to associate themselves with tuition providers. Um, So uh, large entities, so whether it's traditional agencies or other tuition providers of different types, they may well be required to do that. But we're pressing for them to make sure there is a clear and transparent process for individual tutors to be able to access the National Tutoring Programme. Because individual tutors are very often the most, the best qualified, the most experienced uh, tutors out there. And we, it's a crucial part of the program is to involve them as much as possible. And without the TTA, that simply wouldn't happen because they have no idea how to do it. And they would rather avoid doing it if they could, um, because government doesn't like dealing with huge numbers of, of people in the sector, which is very fragmented and disparate. So really, that's a key, a key area in which the TTA is advocating for tutors. And, uh, and even if even if it becomes the case that individual tutors have to work through some kind of provider, um, the fact that we're trying to work on a framework and a means of getting them involved is already, uh, is already for many tutors, going to be a, a valuable uh, offering that we're, we're making available to them, that there's that advocacy for them. So I think one of the things I'd then say is make sure you're up to date on all of your, on all of your paperwork and, and you've got everything in place that you normally would have anyway, make sure that's all ready. Um, make sure that if, if you've got tuition providers you work with, that you're speaking to them, are they applying to work with the, the National Tutoring Program? Do they understand what it is? Are they members of TTA? Because if they're not, they'll miss out on all the updates that we provide. Um, and, and then make sure that you, you understand some, some channels through which you might be able to access the, the NTP program. Um, keep an eye on the EEF's website uh, and obviously make sure you're keeping an eye on receiving all the TTA newsletters and updates because we will be sending out updates to members which will cover both for corporates and also for individual tutors how to get involved, what you need to look out for and what the criteria are going to be. 
so it, the picture is fairly complex and it's in flux at the moment as things are being built. But um, but yeah, the, what I can say at the moment is we're there for the tuition sector, trying to advocate as best we can to produce a program which is going to be viable and uh, and assist tutors to help make sure they can have the impact on students that we really want to see. It's a really exciting time to be in tutoring, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a really interesting time to be in tutoring. There's never before been a programme like this, as far as I'm aware, uh, on this sort of scale. Um, that is That also makes it particularly important that we get this right. And we're very, very keen to support government and various policyholders and, and organisations that are involved in delivering this to make sure that they avoid the, the pitfalls. They're, they're delivering a programme which is good value for money, and which really does help students to catch up across the country. And, and that's the potential that it has. Yeah. And we're absolutely behind them to make sure that work, works and that happens. Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And now a short word from the QT founder, Julia Silva. If you'd like to hear more about the ideas we touch on here, or gain the tools to take your own tutoring to the next level, the qualification for tutors could be for you. This live online seminar is facilitated by industry experts who, over four Zoom workshops, will cover the foundations of teaching and learning and how it relates to you as a tutor. The workshops are full of rich discussions where you'll learn alongside other tutors and connect on a professional level. We will teach you how to be the kind of tutor every child remembers. Visit our community space at qualifiedtutorcommunity.org and sign up now for our transformative course. We'll see you there. Now, that, that's, that leads us on brilliantly into what, into what I wanted to, to discuss next, really, which was that, so we, this program is, 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 is soon to be launched, but it's currently in the process of being uh, arranged and, and, and set up. This country will need, a, without wanting to sound too sort of militaristic, this country will need a, a group, a body of, of tutors and tuition providers that are sufficiently uh, prepared for how to uh, tutor. Uh, I think the government specified that maths and English was, were going to be the areas that they would focus on um, and that there are enough of them to cover the, the large group of, of disadvantaged uh, students, but also students who have not necessarily classed as disadvantaged, but still um, need that, that kind of extra help. How do we increase the number and quality of, of tutors in this country, John? If, if, if I had to put that million dollar question to you. Yeah, I mean, there is already a large number of tutors, professional tutors in the country. I mean, there's been a real range of estimates. I think the, uh, the ultimate answer is that nobody, including myself, actually really knows. We, we estimate that the, the Tutors Association represents approximately around 50,000 uh, tutors and individuals within the tuition sector across the country. And that includes people that were doing part-time, working for agencies um, or other corporates uh, and different levels of the sort of, of experience and qualifications. Um, there have been estimates by people like the Sutton Trust that the tuition sector is, is up to 250,000 people across the country. But then it's not quite clear how people are defining a tutor. Is a tutor someone that's uh, an undergraduate helping their their i don't know their their cousin or their niece who's who's in sort of uh in school and they're sort of helping them out on an ad hoc basis and maybe getting a tenner a time i mean that doesn't necessarily sound like professional tutoring uh versus obviously the full full-time professional tutors like well especially like i was and there are many people out there and you'll know them as well uh people who uh, it's their full-time career they are they're paid very well and obviously they they do a really really they have an intense job and they're offering a really comprehensive service across the whole uh, a certain spectrum of, um, of, of tuition provision, right? And they're really experienced individuals, professional individuals who put them on a par as an accountant and a lawyer um, in terms of the, the level of professionalism. And that's really where we want to sort of, uh, we want to make sure those people get recognized for, for that sort of professional role they play. So I think how many tutors are there and, and what the tuition capacity is? Uh, certainly there's a lot of capacity, What's really important is a lot of that capacity is not immediately visible to, to government and policymakers. Um, it's all very well there being a report saying there's 250,000 tutors or us saying that we represent 50,000 tutors. The important thing that for policymakers, they don't know who those people are. 
So how do they access them? And that's really, and again, another one of the aspects of where TTA comes in because we're representing what would, I would say is very much largely the, the most reputable side of the sector um, to, to government saying, look, here's the pool of people that can deliver this. There are organizations that, that do specialize in training. Obviously, I know yourselves, um, a number of organizations provide their, their tutors with some form of training or they, they work in partnership with other organizations to provide that training or CPD. And that's certainly a, a way in which the, the number of tutors can be scaled up fairly quickly, especially at the, the lower experience end of the spectrum. I don't think people can conjure up tutors with 10 years experience very quickly. <laughs> Clearly, it takes 10 years. Um, but, uh, but I think there is a prospect that, that some tuition providers can recruit more graduates, can recruit more people into the profession and provide them appropriate training for them to be entry level tutors, as it were, but with, with training and support to be able to deliver an effective service. Uh, and at least that will be appropriate for an, a number of students. Yeah. I think you've touched on a few key elements that we, um, that we wholeheartedly agree with. Um, and I think the biggest one is professionalism. And we put professionalism front and center in everything we do. And we like that professionalism that's also really, really personable. So we're people first and we're working with students who are people first. So we always focus on the whole student and we talk to tutors as whole people. But when you teach tutors to go in as a professional um, and to be prepared and punctual and presentable, then you also give them the opportunity to um, to sort of to represent tutoring at that high level, don't you? Um, I think um, alongside those full-time tutors with 10 years experience that you mentioned, John, we also want to enable the newbies. We really do. We want to create a virtuous cycle where university graduates and undergraduates are able to, to pay forward their, their academic ability um, because a tutor is a specific type of person, isn't it? And we really want to give, do you know what I mean? Every, all about, you, you, you know, exactly the kind of student that you just described that you were. We were all like that and we're able to pay it forward um, and, and that ability, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, I think before we started recording, that wouldn't it be lovely to let every teacher have a chance to tutor? Absolutely, yeah. They wouldn't wouldn't it be lovely so much? To, to train up a whole, you know, a whole cohort of tutors who eventually ended up being teachers um, and that it was sort of a track into teaching that was accessible and of this moment. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, and you mentioned that the, the sort of, teachers having experienced tutoring. Tutoring is in many ways, um, can be a lot harder than classroom teaching in some respects and a lot easier in some others. Uh, but it's, it, tutoring does require a real razor sharp focus on the pedagogy. How do you explain a complex concept to someone? How do you teach them it? Rather than the elements of teaching which, uh, which are a bit mechanistic, like, oh, how do you keep... Uh, how do you keep a, a, a class in check and, and active and usefully engaged? And how what do you have to and all the other sort of general policy bits of of uh, of teaching, which are like the contextual knowledge around um, uh, school policies and education policies and all that sort of stuff. tutoring very much focuses in on that. How do you teach someone a potentially difficult thing that they don't know yet? How do you teach them that effectively? And that's really where I think that's what teachers perhaps have the most to learn from the tuition sector. And they really do have that to learn from the tuition sector because I have to admit, I came out of teaching not necessarily very good at that compared to when I came out of it coming for as a tutor. As a tutor, you really, really learn how to make sure that you can convey those sorts of complex ideas. Uh, and I think that's where really tutors... Um, have a lot more of that experience because they're so so close to sort of the the teachings in the teaching cycle they're repeating that so many more times in an average lesson than a teacher is delivering one lesson over an hour uh, and I think that's really important for teachers to understand it's a different sort of kettle of fish and it has its own challenges fantastic absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I'm waiting for time otherwise yeah, uh, John, we'd, we'd love to pick your brains for, for many, many, for much, much longer than this. We, we appreciate that there is uh, time constraints and we all have uh, uh, busy schedules. Um, perhaps your, your young son is about to run back in, um, but he's, <laughs> he's most welcome. But uh, John, really, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, there, there's really a lot there for our listeners. There's a lot there for, for me. There's a lot there, hopefully, that, that you kind of learned about, about who we are and, and yeah. we all learn a lot more about what, 
the TTA is doing and 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 how it is is helping shooters. Um, there's a wider conversation to have about about COVID and the the long term effects of that and how to plan for that. But uh, but that's for another time. We'd love so to probably invite you back. Yes. Yeah, I'm very happy to come back. No, very happy. Um, maybe in a couple of weeks, months or so, or whatever, then, uh, yeah, very happy to come back and we can have a more discussion. We'd love to be able to sort of share on the podcast what the plans are, what the expectations are for the National mm. Tutoring Programme um, and give you an opportunity to sort of lay it out there for all our tutors if that's a good idea for you. Mm. Yeah, just send me an email with sort of like uh, the kind of the question you want answered and I'm very happy to, to, to do that, send something through. Super. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you both Brilliant. and we'll see you all next time. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Take care. All the best. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, where tutors share their expertise to support the tutoring community. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes below. We exist to connect, share and learn with you because tutoring is a small job that makes a big difference.